Hello, I'm Mike Donaldson and I've been asked by the good people at Millsverse Publishing, Pat and Lisa Mills, to record a short drawing video to help promote Spacewalk comic, um, which is available now on Amazon and Comixology. When will it be available in print? That's a good question, Mr. Invader. It will be available from autumn. Anyway, my strip is called Futon and features a future mutant called Coda. If you're not familiar with the character, Coda is a schoolboy who has been blackmailed by his headmaster into performing unspeakable acts. His warp given superpowers allow him to manipulate gravity in certain specific ways that will become more apparent as the series continues. His main power is to be able to regenerate his body if he's injured in any way, if he's shot by a bullet or if he's crushed by a falling piano, he can grow back his limbs, his tissues, his bones and become whole again. So I've already penciled the image and printed it out on Bristol board in blue line which is easier to ink over than pencils and layers of pencils. So, on with the video. Right, pens. Artists like pens. Nothing fancy, a tiny editing 003 for details. The Micron 03 is my main drawing pen and the ever-reliable brush pen. Right, I start with the eyes and mouth. Uh, I don't want to get swamped with detail at this stage, but the eyes and mouth will define his expression. And if I draw them badly, I can wipe them out and uh, start again. In this case, I want Coda to look like a lump of controlled rage. A anyone seen a film from the 80s called The Wraith, starring Charlie Sheen and uh, I think Cheryl Fenn? Well, you know that quote, yeah, yeah, I don't know who he was, but he was weird and pissed off. That's the kind of thing I have in mind. I already have a colour scheme in mind for the finished sketch so I'm mentally defining areas in terms of light and cool or warm and dark and when inking it's always a good idea to look at your picture your character and think in terms of solidity consciously use line and shadow to define forms I could of course, if I ink this on an iPad or a Wacom, the, the principles are the same. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I know, I know, just give me another five minutes, okay? Well, so yeah, I was gonna talk about fast lines and slow lines. Yeah, because uh, for me, inking like this means I can take advantage of drawing really fast and breaking or tapering the line or scrubbing in cross-hatched texture. Or I can draw slowly for the detailed bits. You can do this digitally too, but it never feels quite right on a computer.
time to answer some questions people have been asking me recently. Let's look down the list. When's the print version out? When can I buy a printed copy? I'm waiting for the... Right, here's one. How did you get work on Space Warp comic? It started when Pat Mills put up scripts for a comic he was working on, on his website. And I was, as usual, looking for work. I certainly wanted to draw something in the action adventure genre. I'd been working on allegedly humorous cartoon strips for quite a while. So I uh, drew a sample page and I sent it off. I think I chose Futum because it looked like the strip least likely to attract too many great artists and I wanted a chance. All the other stories were more classic Pat Mills, more fantastical with science fiction and things going on. Great to draw. I don't know if Futon did attract the least submissions, um, but I know I drew the sample page three or four times before it was accepted, uh, which, which I was pleased to do. The feedback I was getting back from Pat was gold dust, the guidance, the criticism. It's really hard to mark your own homework, so it's great to have a one-on-one -on -one with a giant of British comics who has worked with the best comic artists the UK has ever produced. Yeah. The print copy is out in autumn! Okay? Right, um, which is my favourite Pat Mills character? Ooh. I think I'd say Nemesis the Warlock. And if you haven't read it, go out and buy the books, it's brilliant. It's also a strip I wish I'd continued, but I guess it had to end. And finding an artist to continue with that level of detail, to follow in the footsteps of O'Neill and um, Brian Talbot and Hicklington, page rates being what they are, difficult. So another, uh, what are your influences? Mm. Well, of course we swim in a sea of influences. I'm influenced a lot by films, in fact mainly bad films. My tolerance for bad films is very high. Everything from Jess Franco or Jean Rowling, Paul Nashi and others. I mean, I like, I really like Italian cram films from the 60s and 70s and spaghetti westerns. The look of these films definitely influences my style, I'd say consciously. Here's an interesting one. Did you work unpaid on Futon and was it worth waiting for royalties, profit share, etc? Yeah, I spent about a fortnight drawing my pages, um, longer with edits and formatting and such like, and uh, it took about a year before Space War went on sale. Uh, as of now, I haven't seen sales figures, so I have no idea if this was a good idea or not. But that's acting like I had a choice of paid work or this. I didn't. Nobody wanted to hire me to draw stuff anyhow. I mean, the industry on a whole is pretty flat, I think. In fact, Hannah Berry's UK Comics Research Report was just published. It's worth finding a copy. It says that 66% um, of people working in the comics industry earned less than five grand last year. 44% um, earned less than a thousand pounds. This is not a well-paid industry for all but a lucky few. So obviously I hope this is profitable and pays a decent page rate eventually. I know Pat and Lisa have worked very hard, in fact we've all worked very hard to make the best comic we can and our readers seem to be enjoying it so well, we'll wait and see. And now I use an old brush, in fact a very old brush. I stole it from school many, many years ago. I think the art teacher, Mr Barnes, used to make them himself from his hog-like nasal hairs, of which he had an unlimited supply. <laughs> I use it to rough up the edges and add interest. I also use cotton wool buds, um, an old toothbrush, a glass eyedropper, 
Um, I mean, I, I, I appreciate controlled, almost etched drawing and draftsmanship, but as I get older, I find myself returning to the simple joys of splattering and dribbling. <laughs> but that's enough about my health. <laughs> yeah, only joking, although I am a massive hypochondriac. It's big brush time. Filling in the blacks. Actually, I'd normally do this, the filling in, in Photoshop. Um, well, for speed. And not to use up my ink too quickly. Well, this bit isn't blurring. As you can see, I use a cut section from an old towel with lots of bobbles and texture, which I then dip into the ink, dabbing off the excess. Then we add texture to the picture, randomness, depth even. You can easily overdo the stippling, but you can also be a bit too hesitant. So, sometimes I put the texture on before I ink the line work and work into the patterns. There's a bit there where the stippling went over the lines. I could use Copic White to erase it, but um, I will delete that on the computer later. And that's it. Then I scan the sketch and clean it up in Photoshop and add digital colors in Procreate on the iPad. And this is the finished sketch. Hope you and the other four viewers enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.